there are four papers in this session. The first paper is by Anirudh Shupriya M. Dilip Kumar Barman and K. K. Sondra Pandian, who are going to talk on or give present a paper on a hybrid hypercharitic based dynamic key stream generator using perturbance process for public pre infrastructure application. I welcome you all for this uh, today's event, which have been organized by the CCO office under the aegis of um, in this international conference on PK and its application. I take this privilege to be here to present my research paper, which is not recent, which is a couple of years back, along with my students. So it, see, what we have planned is that key generation. Basically, I have to concentrate more on the key generation than the key algorithms. So how do I am going to generate a key? so that I can be able to utilize for the transmissions as well as the encryption process. So as uh, Ramesh was uh, talking about, I've been working with the Ramesh and Hoda. So we have been working more on the algorithmic side. How to generate a random numbers? So how to make it more random so that we can able to kill the encryption as well as in the hardware security level. So we have been working in the VLSA hardware. So we basically work on the chip level fabrications where we want to go for a pure ran two random numbers so that we can make a hash out of it. So how to do that activities. So these are the ways where we uh, have been keep on working how to manufacture this key generation. So different ways of activating this for PK applications. So let me figure out how the outline of this presentation goes. What is a cryptography? Since the audience is basically from cryptography background, so you might be knowing what is a cryptography and what are the dimensions of cryptography. And we have been talking about more on the hardware and software security. That's what I have been putting a question on Ramesh. How about this hardware thrones? We cannot detect. So each and every device manufacturer says there is an end of life, end of service. It means the thrones is going to get active because there are always a passive and inactive thrones, which is going to enhance or which is going to get activated after a couple of times. So that's, a, that, that's where the test and the thrust comes into picture. So this is where the hardware and software, still the hardware is more rugged towards security. And moreover, what are the research gaps and what are the motive, how do we got the motivation out of it and all, all the proposed algorithms and how the results have been analyzed. Basically, the, what is a cryptography? It is a security, essential by transmitting the information via the network where the applications like military, government documents, e-online document transactions. So these are the ways where I can be able to utilize my information security to be in a standardization. What is a cryptography? It's a study or method to protect the informations. I have to ma maintain my confidentiality, integrity, and the availability. So these are the ways where I have to make my trust in the platform. So that's what the PK application does, as well as in the quantum world, these what are the existing traditional RSA, as well as the what Ramesh was also quoting it, and RSA and the hash is going to be, cannot, cannot be able to retrieve back or it's vulnerable. So these areas where we have to focus more on the dimension of cryptography, where we have to analyze towards symmetric or the post-quantum algorithms. These post-quantum algorithms under, it's a under shortlisted by NIST, but still it's under process going on. And what are the attacks has been possibility, it has to be years and years will take to understand by the researchers to analyze the each and every round, whether the thrones can be inserted or not. So these are the ways where we can able to, to go ahead with the applications. So I've been talking about the dimension of cryptography, the way we have substitute the proposed, the transposition, how the plain text can be moved out of it. These are the ways where the blockchain or the block cipher, the stream cipher can be taken into account. And the symmetric ciphers, as you all know, it's, it's very strong in the post-quantum world. The only challenging is that how to transmit my private key. So again, there's a post-quantum communication has come out where we can transmit the key as well, and we can make a more secure channel of information, and it can be utilized for the PK application. So these are the different ways where I'm going to utilize my self practical private key. I don't require my public and private key to be integrated. Because in post-quantum world, instead of going for NS post-quantum algorithms, which have been shortlisted recently, still there's a other channel of operation can be enhanced. 
where the PK application can be enhanced to that. It's, it's, this is what we have been analyzing of many years. What, of, what is the security, basically? Whether it should be in hardware or software, how the transients are inserted, how do I make it more rugged to my system? The hardware is more rugged than the software because software runs on any platform, any operating systems, which can have a malicious codes. So these are the different ways where my software is vulnerable, more vulnerable, which cannot be activated or which cannot be stopped activating it. So these cryptographic algorithms, okay, like which performs the general purpose of computing with the operating systems, and cryptographic algorithms can be easily updated. It's a flexible mode, but in hardware it's not possible. You have to change the whole IP code, the whole ASIC design. If it is a, as FPGA mode, we can able to reconfigure it. Otherwise, we cannot be able to continue it. So these are the small ways of application where the hardware and software security can be enhanced and more vulnerable can be found out in the Trojan's point of view. So when we talk about these are the motivations why I want to go for a hardware security, so rather than the software security. Our software security, I have to give for every time there's a patches. The patches knows where's the vulnerable. Where we have to fetch it, where I have to stop it. That's why every time Apple Phone comes up with the new updates to secure the modules in the cryptographic module which they have inbuilt with the chip. So this is where the Trojans they keep updating so that they stop the movement of the data flow within the chips. So this is where the every service provider, every OEM, every chip manufacturer has their own constraint towards the implementation. As you all know, what is the public uh, infrastructure? So I've been discussing many times with this, uh, uh, the two days sessions. I've been working with the for last uh, seventh onwards. We have been talking continuously about the PKI. The PKI solution is going to give my trust. That's what the PKI solution is going to implement and it has been integrated along with the system to enhance more the element with my certificate authorities. So where the trust has been performed along with the certificate root, of, root certificate India, so that is CCA root India 2022 and 2014, which has been already uh, existing in the market. So these are the certificates where the identity of the digital signature is identified as it has been trusted, has been maintained with the root. So this public key infrastructure, the public key security, basically public key infrastructure, basically like a public key security. So where the security exists, where my integrity is maintained, where my authentication is integrated and integrity and non-reputation. So these are the facts where the public key security has to be maintained and it has to be best suited to solve the business needs that the infrastructure, where my certificate authority is going to enhance with my output, that it has to be utilized for these Indian ecosystems. What are the research gaps we have found? Basically the non-linearity and correlation immunity in order to make the algorithm resistance to attack. So there are something like, if you talk about this existing algorithms where we started with the symmetric ciphers, why I went for symmetric cipher basically? Because asymmetric cipher is basically like the key management. They don't generate any algorithms or they don't have new uh, formulation of resistance to the attacks. Where as a symmetric ciphers basically they have used the feedback functions. These feedback functions do not have a linearity. They have to go for the non-linearity for non-reputation process or to maintain the integrity in the systems. So these enhance the researchers to approach the empirical approach to get the gate complexity. So the moment I increase my new algorithm, I cannot compromise on my gate complexity as well as the throughput of the latency. So these are the main challenges that we have been facing out when we started moving towards the new research fields in the symmetric ciphers. So this enhances to get a larger key length. In asymmetric ciphers, like RSA 4096, 2048, if we keep on increasing the size of a key bit, the strength of the security is more. Rather, you have to increase the complexity. Again, the throughput. Again, everything keeps on increasing in resistance to the bit enhancement. Same thing, when you talk about the symmetric ciphers, I'm, when I'm keeping the larger length, when I have the safe channel mode of transmitting this private key, I'm safe. So this is where the post-quantum world, the Shaw's algorithm says, so we can able to manage my algorithm, manage my key length, more secured rather than even in the public infrastructure when I'm able to transmit in the post-quantum communications. So this is where the all implication comes with the new researchers, where we have to enhance the activity towards the, apart from NIST shortlisted algorithms or the post-quantum algorithm in the post-quantum world, the inbuilt with the generator. These generator, you can decide. 
it's not you don't need to go for a true random process or the, the new algorithm which is existing with the symmetric ciphers this key management systems which is going to have a flaws in one or two rounds can be able to be easily identified with the transients so when you insert a transients any asymmetric ciphers you can able to retrieve back the key this is what the more imp implication in this symmetric and asymmetric ciphers so <coughs> why do you want to go for a hardware based cryptography the key gen secure key generation key stream of larger length with minimum number of stages so that my gate complexity is reduced i can increase the more throughput logic low logic complexity of a non linear boolean functions low hardware complexity and high throughput this is what the main idea i want to take it forward this hardware based cryptography so that i can able to achieve this at the sh shortest level of implication in the gate complexity so what i want to achieve in this effic efficient algorithm the architecture and they generate a new non recursive larger pseudo random sequence to secure my privacy information with a low hardware complexity and high throughput so that is what the goal of every researchers we have to go for high throughput and low low logic complexity so when we going to go for this new algorithms keep in mind always the attacker's point of view or the threat point of view we have to analyze at every stage of information so this will make us a more implication the security of the system must rely on the security of the key not on the algorithm so this will show this is the kachos principle 1883 so still it implies for all the symmetric keys uh, such as as well as asymmetric such as how the key has to be man manipulated or managed so yes sir so the proposed algorithm basically utilizes the hypercritic systems where which have unstable equilibrium points these equilibrium points have been analyzed at every point of view so that i get a hypercritic system so that it's confusion mode basically this confusion makes me to understand i'm able to generate my ra true random basically i cannot when i go for a true random i cannot be able to retrieve i should go for a pseudo random but further this hypercritic system will give me my more true random sequence so that i can have a larger length so this is the algorithm steps how we want to follow this non linear uh, feedback shift register with the self shrinking generator sequence so this able to achieve my uh, the proposed hypercritic systems with this equations so this is uh, available in this paper you can just have a flow of, of the hypercritic system uh, follows this uh, architecture with the non linear feedback functions so when i want to go for the research and discussion i have been not able to go through all the fault analytic analysis crypt analytic because there is a shortage of time so we have been doing it some of the crypt uh, lepno exponents analysis where the proposed algorithm is much better than the lambda lambda 1 lambda 2 and lambda 4 so the moment i get a, the minus 15 it means i am able to achieve a stable equilibrium with the hypercritic systems so the brute force attack basically it's uh, the initial possible values of around 10 power my 4 uh, p dash at equal to 22 power 13 so this will able to have initially have the initial value with the more key space cardinality of a non linear we are can able, able to achieve the uh, stages of 2 power n plus 13 p plus so these are the some statistical analysis which have been analyzed with the nist uh, test randomness frequency blockchain the block frequency cumulative the run test longest run test so these are the every different analytic static analysis we have been able to operate where my probability value is more than the uh, thing certain analysis cannot fall in true that may not be able to succeed but still we have been you, uh, able to analyze for something like 1 lakh bits of sequence so with this i like to conclude any new sequence generator uh, with this hypercritic system or any sequence generator you have to make sure that your key is generated in a stable manner it should not fall under any correlation equations or the immunity or the uh, the fault analytics so this has to be enhanced so that every key generation can be able to transmit between the two stages of information so this how we have to able to achieve our able like a new sequence and it can be able to take it to the pk solutions so this is the one way where we can use used for the self signing signatures also which is a very close environment where we can utilize for safe mode of transmitting the private key it doesn't going to be in a outside market so these are the ways where we can able to enhance before this post quantum world comes into picture and we have to be strengthen our own pk system thank you so i have like this is my final proposed methodology where i have been using my whole uh, architectural design so from the hardware point of view we have i used totally in a fpga board where we able to analyze the transmission between the structures 
So from like analog to digital, digital to analog, the transmissions where like we, I made one of the example like nuclear reactors where I cannot go inside or near to the reactors. So these are the places where I can able to utilize my applications. I can put a FPGA board or any hardware device. I can able to transmit in safe mode of channel. I can able to retrieve the data. So this is a small way of information. I have been proposing it out, and it has been uh, working with the, some of the applications in my lab. Thank you. So any nuclear reactors, uh, the data transmissions, uh, they won't be able to transmit the data. Now, as of now, what they are doing is they are transmitting other mode. So when you want to encrypt the data at the same point of view, and you want to transmit. So this is the best way where you can have a hardware, internal operation, usage as a PK solutions, and transmit to the, in a safe mode of quantum communications or any other mode within the circle, as for self-signed signatures, and you can able to transmit. But isn't it, for example, our own nuclear installations, they are technically uh, secluded from internet. Yeah. And so why do you need such things? I'm talking about the, the, master, the master to the slave. Huh? The master to the slave mode. Uh -huh. In that also we can able to secure the uh, operational activity. Because since they are in online mode also, so this we can make it now. Our nuclear stations, they are never on online. Online, in yeah. In my opinion. <laughs> it's, it's like fully offline, that's what I'm saying. So fully offline you know, solutions. Are the whole thing is the process is an important thing. Mm -hmm. Like uh, uh, like what, what happens in the electric, uh, sorry, election, uh, electronic that election. That is also offline. The process is the important thing. It is not one. If you give me the hard words, I can uh, hack it. But it does not prove that the uh, election has been hacked. It's a, it's a process you hacked. have to see. Yeah, the what process is, the is ha yeah, that's true. That's what I've been talking about to Ramesh also, how we want to go for a Thronjan reverse engineering. Yes. That's why hardware-based cryptography is still in strengthening its power. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.